Hello, everybody, and welcome to our latest SoCal housing market update. Uh, this is for November 24th, 2020. It is Thanksgiving week, and my name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, real estate for people who love houses. This fall continues to be unlike no other fall, and this week we're going to actually reverse some common advice that we tend to give sellers year after year. And this year, it is simply not good advice because it doesn't hold true. One thing that we're noticing about this year is that there's a real divergence in the behavior between buyers and sellers this fall. And we're going to get into that when we go into our slides. So without further ado, let's start up our market presentation here. All righty. So our first slide here is our supply when we're talking about supply and demand. It is our new listings. Now, this looks a lot like, um, you know, in shape, similar to other graphs in the fall. So in our under 1 million category, as you can see over the last 8 to 10 weeks, that number of new listings has steadily fallen. This past week is no different. We now got 1,500 new listings in Los Angeles and Orange counties that are under $1 million this week. If we look over here in our $1 to $2 million category, Again, we see this kind of gentle ramp down through the fall. This is pretty normal. Um, usually it actually ramps down a bit faster than that, a point that is illustrated by our next chart here. So what we're comparing is for under $1 million, how do we rank compared to 2019? And if you look at this, we actually have significantly more new listings coming to market versus what we did in 2019. Now, normally, Right, this would, be, this would be a great thing. So if we're talking, this would be a great thing for buyers, at least should I say. So normally, you know, you, you watch the inventory just sort of dwindle away, right? And part of that is because the traditional advice that a lot of people in real estate give out is that generally speaking, probably if they're if in California, if there was a time of year that maybe wasn't the best to put your house in the market, it would be Thanksgiving through New Year's, right? People are very preoccupied with the holidays. There's a lot of things going on. Not as many people are in the market, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And as we see right now, you know, for sellers, this also makes a lot of personal sense, right? Most sellers don't like the idea of moving around Christmas. And if you put your house on the market right now and you got an offer, you would be moving around Christmas time, not the most desirable time for sellers to move. Right, And it would follow suit that buyers would have sort of a similar thinking. And most years they do. But now we're going to take a look at that demand side of the equation, right? So if we jump back in here and we look at what is happening to new escrows, well, those have fallen in the fall. But guess what? They kind of hit a bottom here. And last week they actually rose. So what we have here is we have declining new listings, right? That's declining. And we have the buy side of things has actually, that's really evened out. And in fact, it, it grew stronger in the last week. I think buyers are very anxious. They're not giving up their home search during the holidays like they normally do. And what's especially interesting to me is that I see this in both the under 1 million category and the one to $2 million category. I think this is because you have a lot of move up buyers who are taking advantage of those low interest rates. So historically, this might have been more of a luxury market. Right now, this might actually be a pretty solid middle class move up market. If you bought your home and made some good money, you might have been a 5% down, a 10% down buyer five years ago under a million dollars. And now you are a low 1 million shopper and you're not even raising your payment that much because of the low interest rates and because of the money that you've made on your house. Now, if we compare this to last year, what's really interesting is we see that the number isn't quite as good. I actually remember this period last year. There were a couple of weeks that were really crazy with no new inventory coming on the market, but this is still a really strong number. I'm going to go back, right? We have 1,415 new escrows this week versus 1,519 new listings. That's an incredible number, and I'm going to show you here. Uh, you know, in our absorption rate, what that means. So again, our absorption rate is pretty simple. We just look at this as the ratio of new escrows or new contracts that were signed in the last week to new listings that came on the market. 
And if you look at this ratio here, you can see that we are actually pretty much tied for sort of our highest number, right, that we've ever been. And, you know, anytime you're above 90%, this is just an absolutely nuts market, right? That means that there are buyers galore for the listings. Um, and if you're not getting a lot of buyers in your listing, it is either because A, there is some sort of inherent indesirability to the property, or B, which is usually more commonly the case, the property is overpriced, meaning you're, you're trying a little too hard. However, I will say right now we have a lot of listings where even if sellers go up too high in price, what happens is they just miss two, they, they last two weeks on the market. And then as soon as they drop, they get a bunch of buyers and they get multiple bits. So definitely an interesting time. I don't think I can ever really remember seeing such consistently high absorption rates this far into fall. And if we go to our one to $2 million category, wow, that just really shot up. This is a new high. There are not a lot of listings coming up in the market and a lot of buyers are suddenly in that one to $2 million price range. It's really incredible that this is what we are talking about for the data for the week before Thanksgiving. Now, before we move on to sort of the pricing conversation, I'm gonna give you a caveat. The, the numbers look a little weird and I have what I think is a reason why. And you know, part of this is explained by our demand numbers. I think we are just in this habitually constricted demand environment, meaning there just really is not enough inventory for buyers to choose from. And this, this forces buyers to do things like buy houses they wouldn't normally buy, um, you know, maybe make compromises they wouldn't normally buy. I think a lot of buyers feel like there is a little bit of a ticking time bomb that these rates won't be allowed around forever and that they want to get into that market. They want to take advantage of that, especially as they are watching prices rise right in front of them. So kind of heading back in again, remember there's a caveat. Um, some of the numbers look a little unusual. So our biggest one here is average pending list price, right? And while this is still a really great number here, and this is for our under 1 million category, this is still six, you know, 637, 638,000. It's off our peak of 647. And you'll notice that this is under 1 million. You would expect that if the market was going nuts, why isn't this average pending list price shooting up? And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of the things you have to remember is that this is the pending list price, meaning this is whatever the list price was when the home went into escrow. It is not necessarily the price that somebody is paying for the house. So one of the th interesting things about the statistic is that it's great for long-term trends to sort of see what's happening. But what it's not really good for is kind of this idea of, you know, it, it's not always great when you're in a market that is suddenly jumping because this could just mean that buyers are a bit ahead of the seller. Prices might not be the sellers might be thinking the market is flattened out and the buyers are seeing there's no houses for sale and they're bidding them up, meaning that we have a higher percentage of homes that are going above list price. And if that were true, we could have rising prices and this number wouldn't change that much. The other effect that I wanna talk about for a second is this idea of buyers compromising. You know, when inventory reaches really low levels, what you find is that buyers start doing the circle back and the circle back is where somebody might have rejected a listing three, three weeks ago. For example, they said that home was too small. That home wasn't fixed up enough. I didn't like that it bordered this major street. But now, as that buyer is experiencing trouble getting offers accepted, they might be encouraged by the fact that home hasn't sold and they go back to it. And those homes tend to be lower in price just naturally because they are less desirable for some reason or another. For example, facing a busy road, railroad tracks and back, et cetera. So that can explain also why that pending list price number might actually take a dip. Now, if we look at our list to close ratio, this also shows a dip. We're still over 100%. However, remember this data is based on the homes that close, the homes that close this week, which means these are the contracts that were negotiated about a month ago, month to 45 days ago. And if you watch our other videos, and you should, our ones for first time home buyers, one of the things we talk about is that inventory actually hit a relative high several months ago, or about a month, 
a month to a month and a half ago. So that might correspond with the situation where it was a little bit soft and this would have dipped. Now, if we look at our average pending list price for our over our one to $2 million range, we see the same thing, it dropped a little bit, but remember this pending list price statistic can often be trailing just a little bit by what's about to happen. So we might notice in a next week or the week after that this number actually shoots up. Because remember this week's difficult purchases might result in next week's higher pending list prices. Um, finally, we have our days on market and really to me, this is the number that this, this is the statistic that really tells me we're in a very inventory constricted market. And you'll see here that our days on market actually went up three days. That's not a huge movement, but I'll tell you why. That makes me think that we're on the right track with this idea that buyers are actually, they're, there's so little inventory that they are circling back to the less desirable homes that haven't sold previously. The ones that people have passed over and they're writing offers on those houses. So, you know, the takeaway from this, right, is, is if you're a buyer, understand that, that, you know, really think long and hard. I've always been in the school of thought that, that if you're a buyer, I would rather see our buyers pay market price for a house that they really love than get a good deal on a house that they don't really like. So, you know, always bear that in mind if you're a buyer and understand that, you know, this limited inventory is a situation that really is facing everybody from first time home buyers, even moving on up to that one to $2 million range, right? Maybe to varying degrees, but it's a low inventory market for almost everybody. The second thing to understand is that if you are a seller, if you have a house that has some characteristics that might make it more difficult to sell, this is actually a great time. And we normally don't say that to those types of sellers between Thanksgiving and New Year's. This is, this is normally the time where you've got to have the pristine house. Those are the ones that move quickly in this kind of a time period. But right now, I'm telling you, there is such a shortage of inventory. This is a great time if you have one of those homes that is a little bit harder to sell for one reason or another. There is such a dearth of inventory in the market. You will get showings. You will get attention from buyers. Buyers are not ruling any listings out right now. So jumping back into our affordability, that kind of tells us another interesting story, right? This graph is, it, this is one of my favorite ways to measure affordability because it really talks about what is the payment that buyers are facing um, for a median priced home. And if we look at this and remember median priced home in terms of what closed in the last week or what was the price several months ago, if we look at that, you know, we see in this past week, things have inched up and this is despite a drop in mortgage rates. And the reason is the median home price in Orange County for single families and condos, it, it, it went up. It went up almost, since last month, it went up almost 5%. We have definitely had another little bit of a jump in that market. And I think, you know, if you're the kind of person who's a buyer and you're trying to figure out if you're an active buyer in the market, you already know this. If you don't, I'm going to give you a crash course on something that is very important to know how it works in the market right now. You will place offers on homes. They will most likely have multiple bids. And the most common response to a multiple offer situation is for the call for highest and best. So it basically says they make it a, a sealed bidding process. You submit your highest number. And when you're a buyer, when you're in that moment, you need to know, do I need to offer where the comps are for this house? Do I need to offer less than the comps because we're in a de declining market? Or do I need to offer more than the comps because we are in a rising market, right? And that's what we're trying to do with these absorption rates is, is figure out, are people bidding over the comp value for the house or are they bidding under? Because when you're in that multiple situation, the question that you will inevitably ask your agent, and hopefully they are wise, they are not, you can definitely call us, is where should I be bidding on this price-wise relative to the market? Do I need to go a little bit over and be aggressive because I know that's where the market is moving? Or do I have an opportunity to maybe hang back a little bit on this one? And right now we are definitely in a market where I'd say, you know, if, if you're on a home, if you're, if you're in one of these tighter market segments, which is pretty much almost all of them right now, you really need to be bidding forward of the comps because I would say we are still in a market that is rising upwards. 
just the absorption rate tells me that prices are moving upward. It might not show in the median prices yet, but it will in about a month. Um, anyway, let me go back to this so we can see what's happened. It's inched up almost to 92, 93% of where we were two and a half years ago. So, you know, still it's a very good deal, relatively speaking, to buy a home. But, you know, th this relationship is on the rise a little bit. And I, and I don't see this really changing anytime soon. So, you know, I hope you guys have enjoyed it this week. It's a little bit of a funny week. It is Thanksgiving week. But by no means has the market slowed down for buyers. They are not giving up their home searches. We actually have a home inspection tomorrow, the day before Thanksgiving, on a listing that we have in escrow. Um, you know, buyers are out there. Um, they are working hard. They are looking for homes. Um, be sure to catch our video just for first time home buyers. That comes out on Friday. We will be doing it this Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Always questions, comments. We love them. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. If you are seeing this on Facebook, do be sure to like our Facebook page, Domicile Real Estate. Uh, we checked in for this video, so you should be able to click and go right through to that. And we will see you later on this week for our first time home buyer market update.